Hey everyone, I made this pattern for these tiny apples the other day and thought to share because the peach pattern that I made was really well received. I've been using them as little keychains. I got these star keychain attachments and I thought they looked really cute. So you can make a red or a green or yellow or really any color apple that you want. You just need a couple of different colors for the apple, the leaf, and the stem. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna get started with some red yarn. I'm gonna be making a red apple, but you can use whatever color yarn that you would like for your apple. And I'm gonna begin by tying a magic loop. And then inside of that magic loop, we need to place six single crochet stitches. So here's my first. I'm going to go ahead and begin marking my stitches too. All right, so I've got all six of my stitches in my magic loop. I'm going to pull my tail to close my magic loop. And then I am ready to start in on my second round. So for round two, we're just going to increase in each stitch. So we're gonna put two single crochet stitches in every stitch all the way around. And don't forget you wanna mark that first stitch. Alright, so I've increased in every stitch. I'm going to give my magic loop tail a final tug to tighten it, and then I'm going to give it a trim, because I find it's kind of annoying as I work. Alright, so for round three, I'm going to go ahead and continue increasing by putting one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of my round, and then an increase in my next stitch. And then we're going to repeat that same sequence of one single crochet, increase, another five times total. All right, there's my last increase, and I'm ready to move on to the next couple of rounds. So for four rounds total, we're just going to put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. So we're gonna go around for four rounds, just putting one single crochet stitch in every stitch. So I will see you back here whenever I finish that fourth round of just plain single crochet. All right, so I have just wrapped up my fourth round of single crochet, and I'm ready to start decreasing to close up my apple. So just like we did when we were increasing, we're gonna start by placing one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. And then we're going to decrease by single crocheting the next two stitches together. So the way I like to decrease is I'm gonna go into my next stitch, draw up a loop, and then do that exact same thing in the stitch right behind it. So go into it, draw up a loop and then yarn over and draw through all the loops left on my hook. And then we're going to repeat that sequence of one single crochet and then a decrease five more times for six repetitions total. Alright, so I just did my last decrease. I'm going to go ahead and put some stuffing inside of the apple now. I'm going to pull that last stitch up long and then grab just a little handful of stuffing to add to the inside. Alright, once you've got the stuffing in, you can go ahead and put your hook back in. And then for our very last round, we just need to decrease in every stitch all the way around. Alright, so once you've got your last decrease, we're going to go ahead and take our marker out and then slip stitch to that last stitch, well technically the first stitch of the round. And then we're going to cut ourselves probably a six inch tail or so. And then pull that last slip stitch out. And then tighten down. 
And then we're gonna actually set the apple aside before we close it up because when we attach the stem and the leaf, we're gonna need access to the inside of the apple. So we're gonna set this aside. Let's make the stem next. All right, so for the stem, we're gonna take a little bit of brown yarn and instead of starting with a magic loop, we need to start with a slip knot, but we need our slip knot to have a long tail on it. So save yourself about four to six inches of brown as the tail, and then we'll tie our slip knot. I also like to tie my slip knots a very particular way because I want them to tighten whenever I pull on the tail and not when I pull on my working yarn. So the way that I like to tie them is I'm gonna take that long tail that we've specifically set aside and I'm gonna loop it behind my working yarn. I like to put my fingers on the inside of that loop too. Then I'm gonna swing the tail around and bring it between those fingers that I have inside of the loop. And we're gonna keep pulling that loop through. So I've got it here. I'm going to keep pulling that through. I'm going to grab my working yarn as well and tighten that down into a slip knot. So the reason I tie them that way is because I want it to tighten only when I pull the tail, but not when I pull on the working yarn. So let me do that one more time, nice and slow, just in case you've never tied your slip knots this way before. So again, reserve yourself a long tail and then put it behind your working yarn, and I like to loop it around my fingers, and then kind of swing it around front here, and go down in between those fingers inside the loop, and then we're gonna keep pulling that same tail straight through, and tighten down by pulling both the tail and the working yarn. All right, once you've got your slip knot tied, we're gonna go ahead and put our hook inside, tighten up by pulling the tail, and then we're ready to get started on the stem. We're gonna do that by chaining four stitches. Once you've got those four stitches chained in the second chain from the hook, so remember we don't ever count the one on our hook. So in the second chain from the hook, we're going to begin slip stitching. So we're gonna go through and slip stitch and we're going to keep slip stitching in the remaining two chains for a total of three slip stitches. All right, so once we've got that last slip stitch in our stem, we're going to cut an equal length of tail that matches the length of tail that we have from our slip knot. So I'm just going to cut them so they're close in length. And then to finish off, I'm going to take both strands, the one from my slip knot and also the one that I just cut, and I'm gonna pull them through that last loop on my hook. So I'm grabbing both and pulling them both through. And then I'm gonna tighten them both separately. So there's the slip knot tightened, there's my slip stitch tightened. All right, so now that we've got our stem with these two long tails, we're gonna go ahead and get it attached to our apple. So go ahead and grab the apple that we worked on earlier, and let's thread one of the tails through the eye of our tapestry needle. Once you've got it threaded, we're gonna send it straight down through the magic loop opening that we made to form the apple, and then out through the center of the fluff at the bottom of the apple. We're gonna repeat that same process with this other tail that we have. So go ahead and thread that through the eye of your tapestry needle. And once again, send it down through that same magic loop opening and through the fabric of the apple. And once you've done that, to secure it, we're gonna take these two tails and we're gonna tie a square knot with them. So to tie a square knot, it's just like when you tie your shoe. You'll take one side and cross it over, bring the other side through the loop you've made, and then tighten that down, and tighten pretty tightly whenever you do this. And then I like to double knot mine, so I'm gonna repeat that same thing again. 
Once you've got that knot tied, we're gonna take our scissors and cut really short tails that are gonna hide out inside the apple's body whenever we close it up. So when you flip back over, you'll see you've got your stem attached now and you probably noticed it sort of pulled the fabric of the apple's body in. We want that, we actually kind of want that to hide the end of the stem. All right, so let's make the leaf last and then we'll get it all assembled and sewn closed. All right, so I am ready to start my leaf and I'm gonna start it the same way that I started the stem. Again, with another slip knot with a long tail because we're gonna attach the leaf the same way we attached the stem. All right, so once you've got your slip knot tied, we're going to chain four stitches again. Once you've got those four stitches chained, just like with the stem, we're gonna start in the second chain from our hook. And remember, we don't count the one on our hook. So one, two, we're gonna slip stitch in this first chain. Then in the next chain, we're gonna add one single crochet stitch. And then in our last chain, which is technically our slip knot, we're gonna work five single crochet stitches. We're gonna kind of work them around the outside of the chain, kind of flipping around to the other side. So I like to put my first two on the right side. So here's my first single crochet and my second. And then I like to sort of flip my work a little bit and then add the remaining three sort of to the other side of the chain. So I'm going to push through the other side of the chain, add my third single crochet stitch. Here's my fourth and my fifth. All right, so before we work on, we're going to take our slip knot tail and give it another tug to tighten that stitch that we just worked all of those single crochet in. That's why I like to tie that kind of slip knot so I can tighten that once I'm done. And then to finish up the leaf, we're gonna continue working the other side of the chain by placing a single crochet on the first stitch on this side of the chain. So we're sort of mirroring what we did on the other side. So here's my first single crochet. And then in the last chain, I'm gonna slip stitch And then to close off the top of the leaf, I like to add a single crochet stitch that takes the loop on this side from the slip stitch and then the chain that we skipped to turn. So I'm gonna grab that front loop there and then push my hook through here. Let me show that again nice and slow so you can really see where I'm going here. I'm gonna take this front loop from my slip stitch and then the chain that we skipped over to turn, I'm gonna grab that as well. And then I single crochet those together. I find it gives a nice point to my leaf. And then to finish off the leaf, we're gonna flip it and slip stitch down the center of the chains that we added all of our stitches to. So I like to turn and then that first chain that my slip stitches are in, I'm gonna go in and make a really tight slip stitch there. And then I'm gonna keep slip stitching. Here's my second. This slip stitch is in the chain, the slip knot that has all of our single crochets in. And then the last slip stitch I make is in the third single crochet that I made. It's sort of the one that's kind of right in the middle of the bottom of the leaf. So just one last slip stitch. And then we're ready to close off the leaf and we're gonna do that just like we did with the stem. So we're gonna make sure our tail is about the same length as the slip knot tail that we made. Give that a snip. And then just like with the stem, we're gonna pull both tails through our last slip stitch. And then tighten them separately. And that wraps up our little baby leaf. 
and we're ready to attach it to our apple. So we're going to do that the same way we did with our stem. Thread one of the tails left from your leaf through your tapestry needle. And then we're going to sew once again down through where the stem is in, the magic loop opening. So sew straight down and into the body of the apple. And then repeat with the other tail on the leaf. So thread it through your tapestry needle. Send it straight down through the magic loop opening and into the body of the apple. And then before we tie our knot, let's double check that our leaf is the correct direction. So the chain stitches that we made down the center, that should be facing up. That's the front of the leaf. So double check that yours isn't flipped over. And if it is, it's really easy to fix. You can just kind of flip it. So once your leaf's in the right position, we're going to do the same thing we did when we secured the stem. So we're going to take those two strands from the leaf and we're going to tie a double square knot. So here's my first. Pull really tightly to tie that. And then here's my second. Then once that's secure, you can go ahead and give that a snip really close. And all of those tails from the leaf and the stem are going to hide inside of the body of our apple. Alright, so last up we need to close the apple up. So let's go ahead and thread the tail from the apple itself through our tapestry needle. And then to finish up, we're going to sew through the front loop of every stitch left behind from the last round of the apple. Once you've got all six of those stitches sewn through, you can pull gently to close. And then we're going to tie a surface knot. So we're going to loop the tail from the apple over on itself. And then sew down and up through some of the fabric of the apple and into that loop that we've made. And then pull. And if you keep pulling, it'll tie a knot. And then we can weave this tail and the knot in by sewing into the fabric of the apple. And pull tight to send the knot to the inside. I also like to make sure, since these are usually keychains for me, that this tail is woven in really well. So I'm going to sew a few more times into the apple itself, just to make sure this tail is really woven in. All right, once you've got that sewn and woven in, you can go ahead and give the tail a snip close to the fabric of the body. And that completes your apple. If you'd like, you can attach it to a keychain attachment. And the way that I like to do that is I'll take that jump ring that comes with each keychain and thread it through some of the fabric close to where the stem is and then close it off. All right, but that wraps up this Apple tutorial. I hope you enjoyed.